Um, <laughs> but we've been talking about the, um, the how to get out of a paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. We've been trying to uh, show you from the word of God what God's perspective is of our finances, of, of um, you know, how we live our life financially and, and what things are going on. And, and how he thinks about it. What, what does God think about us and our money and, and how we can uh, overcome obstacles, we can overcome lack and not enough, we can overcome debt, we can overcome the, the problems of, of financial things that come into our life. Um, remind you about the Connect card if you have a, a prayer need or a testimony that you want to share. Um, or you just want to um, give us your information, you can c fill out a Connect card if you're a first-timer. Uh, if, if this is your first time visiting us, then uh, please go and get a Connect card or go on the website and go to the uh, faithconnection.church and go to the website and click on the uh, Connect tab and you can fill out a Connect card there. We do a lot of connecting, don't we? Connect this, connect that, and connect, connect, connect. Yep, because we get you connected to God. All right, um, if you need a giving envelope, they're available here in-house, or you can go, if you're watching online, you can go to the, the website and click on the, on the sewing tab and give that way. Um, let's go to Genesis 17. Genesis chapter 17, chapter or verse 1. So this is when... God presents himself to Abraham, and he, uh, I'll just read the verse to you. Uh, when Abram was, 90, was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blessed. No, be blameless. So often we, we want God to bless us no matter what, but God put a condition on him. He said, be blameless. But, he, but the Lord says, I am Almighty God. In the New King James, he says, I am Almighty God. If you search that out in the Hebrew, it is El Shaddai. God declares his name to be El Shaddai. And if we translate that name, El Shaddai, into English, it is the God of more than enough. That's who he is. He's declaring himself that. And so often... We, we hear stuff like that in church or somebody's preaching a message and like we think, well, that whoever's preaching it, whoever's teaching the word, they are declaring God to be the God of more than enough. No, God declared himself. This is, this is who I am. And so often we can, we can meet people and, and, they, and they declare themselves to be something and we find out that they're not that. Or they declare themselves to be something low or abase themselves, and we find out, no, they are much more than who they said they were, that they are more than that. Well, God never does that. He never presents himself to us different than what he truly is. And so he presented himself to Abram, and later he changed his name to Abraham, but he presented himself to him, and he says, I am the God of more than enough. And that should encourage us when we're trying to figure out, how do I get out of this paycheck to paycheck lifestyle, how do I get out of debt, how do I get my finances in order, how do I stop struggling and not having enough, and it, we need to rely on and trust in the God who is the God of more than enough, that he's the one that can supply everything we have need of. And so often we're trying to struggle and figure it out on our own, and we don't have to. It's not up to us to figure it out. It's not up to us to come up with a plan and figure out how to do it. It's up to us to trust and believe God that he is the God of more than enough and he is the one who can accomplish these things in our life. And we may not understand how. We can't see a way out. You know, it's like <clears throat> that four-mile tunnel that has a big curve in it. You can't see the light at the other, other end of the tunnel until you're way into that tunnel. And sometimes you think that light at the end of the tunnel is another train coming the other way and it's going to be a real crash. But we got to understand that God sees the end before we even know there's a beginning. Before we even start, God already has the end to it. Before we were even born, God had an end for us of salvation. He had a way 
to get us to heaven and to be with him forever. He had a way to have a family, uh, you know, the family of God in heaven for all of eternity, for his people to be with him. And that in his name is Jesus. That was the plan. We couldn't have come up with that. We couldn't have figured that one out and said, well, here's what we're going to have to do. God's going to have to have a son, and then we're going to you know, have to send him to the cross. And we had no clue. We didn't even know that we needed God. We didn't even know there was a God, and he already provided salvation for us. And so in our finances, we don't know the way out, but we know the one who does. And so that's where our trust and our faith and confidence has got to be in him. And if, we, and if we're so concerned about trying to figure it out, and we're just so agonizing over it, we're so worrying about it, and, you know, just full of agoni- agon- agonizing over it, and so full of worry and strife, and, and just, you know, finances is one of those areas that destroy marriages tremendously. You know, they say, I don't know what, I don't know what the numbers are, 50% of marriages end in divorce, or whatever the number is. And the vast majority of those is over money. It's over communication and money. And the one thing they never communicate about is money. <laughs> and so if, if a family has, you know, a couple has trouble communicating, it's usually about the money. That's what they're struggling to communicate. So it always comes down to the, the finances or the vast majority of time it comes down to finances that's the, the main cause of issues and problems and things in, in marriage couples. And that's by design. That's how Satan has made the system of this world's economy, this world's economic system, so that it can destroy the people of God and so it can pull us down. But we don't have to let that because our God is the God of more than enough. He's the one that can supply that. And when we say, when he says that he is the God of more than enough, we, we come from that like, okay, God, give it to me, you know. Send down big piles of $100 bills. I want to see Benjamins. You know, I want, to, I want to see some cash. And God's like, no, I'm not a counterfeiter. I don't have printing presses in heaven. And I'm not going to print you counterfeit bills and send them down. And there's not going to be a, you know, a big check in your mailbox, though that can happen, but most of the time not. God says that he will bless you and he will anoint you. Now that means that he will empower you. He will, be, he will enable you to get out of this problem, to enable you to come out of that. And when you do that, that's when you're, you're part of the process. And that, man, that brings great blessing to God. That brings great praise from us to God. And, you know, if you take a little kid or, or, a, or a teenager or a child or whoever, and you say, you know, you know if you're a good boy, I'm going to give you a, a dollar. And, you know, you give them the dollar and they're off and they spend it on something they don't even... They don't even remember that they got the dollar or who it came from or whatever. The stuff that they bought is gone, and there's no nothing to show for it. But you take a, a young teenager and you uh, show them how to work and earn that money, and you show them how they can actually earn that maybe through an allowance or through, you know, doing chores or actually getting a job. We we always were after our kids. They had to do paper routes and they had to do all this stuff like that. They wanted to, but we didn't have to be after them, but they didn't have a choice. They didn't know that at the time, but, they, you know, it's like you've got to learn to work, not, not to get the money, but to learn to work. And so they would go out and, and, you know, make money, and, boy, that money meant something to them. Well, it's the same thing with God. If, if we expect God just to give us stuff, it's not going to mean anything to us, and what's going to happen? We're going to end up blowing it on the wrong things and doing the wrong stuff with it, and we're going to be right in the same spot we were in. In fact, we could get in worse condition than we were financially. And so if, if the Lord leads us and guides us and he takes us by the hand and, care, and leads us through the process of coming out of debt and coming out of that paycheck to paycheck lifestyle and he shows us, you know, um, he, you know, he imparts to us wisdom and understanding about these things and teaches us and shows us how to come out of that, Man, when you come out the other side, you're like, God, not only do I have, I'm out, but I know how not to get back in. And if life circumstances happen, I do get back into those situations. I know how to get back out of it. And the other thing is my relationship with God is now even stronger, even more intimate, even more real to me because he has led me through that. And so, 
you know, it's not up to us to figure out how to do it. It's up to us to take the hand of God and allow him to lead us through it. Somebody say, give me a good old Methodist amen on that one. All right, uh, remind you about your three-month reserve. I've been encouraging you to, to, uh, to build up a three-month reserve of your expenses. I believe this is prudent and wise. This is just what the Lord's leading me to uh, encourage you to do. And so my question is, how's that going? Have you done something? Have you figured out where you're going to put it? How you're going to build it up? Where, you, where is it going to be? Is it going to be in a jar in the backyard, buried in the ground? Is it going to be, you know, hid in a cabinet? Or did you go out and buy a little safe that you can put it in? Or did you open up a savings account that you can put it in? Did you, whatever, did you get a money market? Did you, you know, what's your plan? What are you doing? So that's my question. How's it going? How's your three months reserve going for you? Are you putting stuff into it? Is there, I'm going to do this much every month and I'm going to, sow this into my own life. Since I'm part of the kingdom of God, I can sow this into the kingdom of God. I can sow this into my life. And then now I'm going to set this aside and Lord, it belongs to you. It, it is your reserve. You do with it. You instruct me to do with it as you please. And we will, we will go from here and accomplish great things with it. And I, I just want to encourage you to, to do that. And so, you know, that's my question. How's it going? How you doing? How you doing? You doing all right? All right. <laughs> so get that three-month reserve away and, and get it going. You, you might think, man, I'm, I'm, I can't even pay my bills on time. I'm struggling. Do something. I don't care if it's a nickel, a dollar, ten dollars, whatever, a month or a week or whatever. Do something. Make a commitment to make a decision that I'm going to do this. This is how, this is how you lose weight. This is how you get, you know, start an exercise program. This is how you get your finances in order. You've got to make a decision, a quality decision, and then keep to it and do it. You know, we make those decisions, those, uh, what do we call them? Uh, at New Year's, New Year's resolutions. You know, we make those and they don't mean nothing. Usually for most people, it's kind of like, it's a wish. It's a hope. It's like, oh, I hope I can save some money. I hope I can do something. I hope I can you know, get in better shape or lose some money or eat better or whatever. Um, it's, it's when we actually make a decision and then we determine to, okay, now I'm going to make a plan on how to do that. That's when we can actually do great things. And don't despise small beginnings. Don't, that scripture tells us that. Don't despise doing something little. Even when you think you can't, do something. I, I can't put, impress that with you enough. Do something, anything, something, and you'll, you'll be surprised how fast that'll grow that you'll, you'll start, let's say you just start a dollar a month, and next thing you know, well, I could do two this month, and so I'm going to do two, and then you think, well, I could do five, and, you know, I have it, and so you, it's just, a, you'll be amazed that just pretty soon, within a few years, you'll be putting $500 a month into a savings account and be building up a reserve that you can be a major blessing with. Somebody say, that's my goal. See, that's our goal here at Faith Connection is to not to hoard up, but to be distribution. Well, you got to have something to distribute. You know, if you're going to be a blessing and distribute things to those in need, then you've got to have something to do that with. And so this is, this is what the Lord is instructing us to do. All right.